Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing how trapped shorts are trying to escape the phantom shares of AMC and many more in the video. So make sure you guys watch until the very end. So straight away, we're going to be talking about how trapped shorts are trying to escape. So what we've got here is 3 billion due in 2026. Surely trapped big short sees this as their best chance to bankrupt AMC. I always wonder why short sellers fought to drag out the settlement legal case and why they fight so hard to prevent capital races. They hope to kick the can to 2016 to escape. So what we're looking at is firstly the corporate borrowing as of June 30th, 2023, and the amount that we obviously have to pay by um, each year. And what you guys can see is that in the total of 4.6 uh, billion, we have a large sum of 3 billion that is due in 2026. So that's obviously what we're talking about here with 2020, uh, with 3 billion due in 2026. Now, the reason why we're saying how tra um, trap shorts are trying to use this escape is because we know that this is going to be a very, very long game. Essentially, shorts have no way of winning apart from one method, and that is if AMC goes completely bankrupt and it gets delisted and it doesn't exist on the stock market anymore. This is possibly the only way for hedge funds to get out. So what their aim, what their objective is to do is to obviously make AMC bankrupt. And so that's why this is very, very important to highlight is that we have, of course, the corporate borrowing. We have the 3 billion due in 2026. Now, you can obviously see this with how they were trying to drag out the settlement, how they were trying to prevent capital races. You know, when we look at the chart right now, we see that the price go down. But what we have to understand is that when originally this is happening, remember, everyone's saying that this is due to the settlement. But we have to understand clearly that when they wanted the settlement, when they wanted the conversion, institutions were against it, retail was for it. And so this isn't done with, of course, you know, retail selling. This is because they know now that they, they can't do, you know, what they wanted in terms of preventing the settlement, preventing the conversion. So what they can do now is bring the price down of AMC as much as possible. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. All because of the fact that if they are able to obviously prevent money from being raised, firstly, that gives us a lower cash flow, that gives us lower cash to work with so that we can't pay off debt. But also, not only that, with lower cash, we are obviously then not able to expand the business. We're not able to get new uh, streams of revenue, etc., etc. And all of that is to, of course, essentially demolish and um, the fundamentals of AMC and to make AMC go bankrupt and that's what they're hoping to do because we know that it is going to be a very long game so they're willing to wait until 2026 but we're also wait, waiting to, uh, wanting to wait until 2026 but the fact is right now is that we are able to raise cash and if we are not going to be you know stock on loans such as 3 billion if we're able to pay this then AMC will not go bankrupt and they will have to continue paying money but then this brings us to the next thing of the phantom shares about what methods they're doing to you know try and hold them until 2026 so what we can see here is we have been receiving numerous complaints from the public regarding missing AMC entertainment shares. This is a clear example of what we refer to as phantom shares, a situation where your broker appears to have sold you shares that never truly existed. So one way to understand phantom shares is by considering the significance of failing to deliver situations. It's a straightforward concept. Every FTD occurrence results in a failure to receive situation. Whatever isn't delivered also means your broker hasn't received it. For individual investors, your broker's failure to receive or receive effectively turns into phantom share with, within your account. In essence, the broker has taken your funds, provided an IOU, but hasn't delivered actual shares. Now, I am curious to how many of you still have not received your AMC shares, you know, if not at all. I'm curious to see just what is truly happening. Now, more on this is about how they easily reset the FTDs and get off the threshold list. And again, finding shares that are phantom shares that are non-locatable. So what we got here is a very, very uh, easy concept to grasp. FTD, hold on. OMG, I have 10 million AMC FTDs. Tomorrow the regulator will come. And if I don't show him I'll have these shares, I'll have to buy them on the lit market and I am effed. Bank slash market maker, no worries. Thanks to the fact that the company is on the threshold list, we have a nice law that says we can give you the shares without having to locate them. So here you go. Take these 10 million AMC shares. We'll write a flex option and you are ready to go. I just want a little fee in exchange. In this way, they just reset the FTDs. If you go and see how many flex options they do for AMC every day, they are way more than every other existing shares. Every FTD means someone paid for something that they did not receive. Imagine if you ordered food and it was not delivered, but you were charged for it. Sounds like theft to me. 
So for those of you wondering, you know, what they're trying to do right now and how they're doing it, this is exactly explained. Essentially, they are obviously able to find these, you know, what I think is corrupt ways of resetting the FTDs, of, of course, extending the FTDs. And again, this is something that needs to be fixed because under normal circumstances, they need to buy them from lit market. Now, it's precisely because they do things like this. Whilst it's frustrating that we can't have any control over it, we can't have any say over it, that it does then show us that it is because they are struggling. It is because they are in deep waters. It is because that they are trapped, that they have to use methods like this. Otherwise, why else would they be doing these things? Why else would they all come together? Because if they don't come together, if the bank market maker and these um, short sellers don't come together, then what we can trigger is possibly one of the biggest crashes. Uh, we could potentially bankrupt many, many of hedge funds out there because of what they have done. But it's precisely because they're doing this that we know that this is possible. And it, again, is only a matter of time because of everything that is happening. Because if we don't bankrupt them, if we don't cause a market crash, there will inevitably be something that will cause a market crash. And that thing will trigger along with this. This is a massive, massive mine that they have dug that will explode on them and not us. And that's why I'm excited to see. Furthermore, if you look at why they're trying to protect themselves, what we can see here is take a look at the institutional ownership of these three firms. Cinemark is 112% institutionally owned. IMAX is 77% institutionally owned. And AMC is only 25% institutionally owned. Now, when you take a look at this and you start understanding that if AMC were to go up, the people who will benefit from AMC going up is retail investors like you and me and not these hedge funds. You understand why they are then trying to push this down. Because if we have times where AMC goes up, they're obviously going to get extremely burnt out. And what they want to see, and this is something that we have talked about in the past before, is that institutions actually have shown signs of wanting to buy into AMC, but they're not able to do so due to the fact that we have bought up the float. They are not able to buy shares. Think about it. We are buying shares right now. Even at times like this, we are able to buy shares. These shares may be phantom shares, but it doesn't change the fact we are still willing to buy shares. We are not selling shares. The majority of the real shares is owned by us and these hedge funds can't get their hands on it. So even if AMC were to explode, they will not benefit from it, but rather get burnt out extremely from it. And that's why they're trying to push it down. You know, another statistics, so the market is up 87% year to day. IMAX is up 27% year to day and AMC is down 82% year to day. Again, make the correlation. Cinema being the most institutionally owned is up 87. IMAX being again most institutionally owned is up 27. AMC being most um, retail owned, what we see here is down 82%. Because they don't want us to benefit, because they understand that if we are able to benefit, if we are able to see AMC go up, they will see a massive, massive drop in their money. So even though AMC is down 82% year to date, and this is, again, my opinion, I am curious to what everyone thinks. As always, none of this is ever financial advice. So do take us a grain of salt. Make sure you do your own due diligence and research. But even in my own, in my own opinion, even though AMC is down 82%, on paper, it would look like the shorts who have shorted a year ago on the AMC would technically be up 82%. However, what we have to understand is firstly, they are paying large amounts of cost to borrow, where it's most likely eaten into their profit. So despite the fact they're 82% up, the actual realized profit or unrealized profit in terms of money, in terms of value, could be zero or even negative due to the fact of cost to borrow. But not only that, is that majority of them have synthetics, have naked shorts, where those are eating into the profits as well. And so that's why they're not closing. Even though we are down 82%, even though on paper it looks like they are up 82% in their short position, because of everything that's happening, they have not actually made any money. And now something that is ridiculous to be looking at is what is bullish news, in my opinion as well, just like AMC to Moon has said here. But the reason why I say this is because the title is ridiculous. AMC stock. Adam Aaron probably saved the company, but he lost the apes support. Now, firstly, just take a look at this um, quick poll where it's, I support AMC and A. I do not support AMC and A. So it's needed to say that there will always be people who won't support AMC or support Adam Aaron. Now, that is fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. What we can see here is the majority is, is supporting AMC and Adam Aaron. Now, we then go back to this article where we're looking at how he's saying that they have lost 
the apes support. That is clearly not the case. And the reason why they're saying this is because they're obviously trying to create, you know, false news. They're trying to create things that will, of course, get you to panic. If AMC were to lose the ape support, that is essentially losing the core. That is like a car and a fully, you know, oil car having no oil. It cannot run. However, that is not the case for AMC. We are supporting AMC. And what they want to say here is that Adam Aram has saved the company. But now we don't want the apes to be here anymore because we, the institutions, want to jump in and take a profit off of this, take a bite off of this cake. And that's why I'm saying that they, we have lost their apes' support. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.